As the opioid epidemic continues to spread across this country, it's easy to lose touch with the personal side of the story. More often than not, reports like these will cite the statistics, the number of overdoses, people seeking treatment, relapse rate, insurance numbers, that sort of thing. All important math here, but we forget there are people behind all those numbers, and that's the part of the opioid epidemic story that we don't tell enough, that all those numbers represent people like you and me. And even when we lose those people, there are loved ones and friends left behind that now cope with the hole that opioids took away. And that's in part why filmmaker William Dickerson wrote and directed the movie No Alternative. It's because of his connection to one particular statistic, his sister Brianna. You know, We've spoken before. Yeah. Um, the fact that you're back again speaks to the success of the project. Um, and we'll talk about the soundtrack as sure. well, which is getting a lot of buzz. But for folks who don't remember, we'll go through the plot, but this isn't just the script. In many ways, this is your life. Yeah, it's, it's extremely autobiographical. Uh, it takes place in the early 90s. And it's a brother and sister story, right? Uh, Kurt Cobain had just committed suicide, and a lot of teenagers at the time, that was the reason why they picked up an instrument. It's the reason why I picked up an instrument. I started a band. So the character in the movie starts a band um, in the hopes of becoming the next Nirvana. And uh, the interesting thing about the movie is that the, the, the sister character decides to reject the trends of alternative Nirvana, you know, uh, all the music that everybody else is into and becomes a gangster rapper, which is so outside the realm of what she's used to. Uh, but in a way, it's, it's how she deals with her her mental illness and that character is based after my own sister who did this in in real life so yeah it's very much uh, art imitating uh, life in fact um, let's go to a clip of it because uh, the the sister uh, and the character um, will see this this is Bridget and her family in the doctor's office when I lie down I can't think about anything else except why I'm not sleeping I can't even remember the last time that I had a dream mm-hmm We'll start her on Neurontin. It's a mood stabilizer. Smooth out the Zoloft. As for the insomnia, no. I'll prescribe a, a sleeping aid. Right, with half dosage to start and monitor it. We'll see where we stand in a month. Yeah, are you sure all these prescription drugs are the answer? She's been taking them for years and we're still having these issues. Medication remains the most effective treatment. And there's so many different themes going on, and uh, uh, sadly, very relevant even to today. Yes. Um, the Prozac Nation, as they say, the pharmaceuticals, you can speak to that from a first-hand basis and also through the characters. Um, music is a huge portion of it. Mm -hmm. um, but then also, you know, coming of age. I mean, the character, Harry Hamlin, yep. a judge. People may remember some of the scenes if they see the film based in Yonkers, and there's a lot of Westchester scenes that are in there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, talk a little bit more about your personal connection, sure. this story, but also all those competing narratives simultaneously that you know a lot of people can probably relate to. Sure, yeah, there's a lot of layers to, to the onion here. Uh, and obviously my relationship with my sister and watching her uh, progress through her mental illness was a big uh, influence, uh, you know, an inspiration for me to make the movie. The, the character that Harry Hamlin plays is loosely inspired by my own father, who's a Supreme Court judge. Um, in New York State. So, you know, it, it, it cuts really close, close to the bone. And I also, you know, experienced firsthand my sister beginning to take all these uh, antidepressant drugs in, in the early 90s. And that was really a time where they started to become very mainstream. And doctors, you know, would prescribe this SSRI for a month, see how that works. And then if that, if that doesn't really um, help, then we'll, we'll switch you on to something else. And that actually, you know, has resulted in a real epidemic of drug addiction, especially for people with borderline personality disorder, because medication really isn't the way to treat that. It's really treated through uh, behavioral therapy. And my sister wasn't diagnosed with that until 10 years after she's, she was on all these drugs. So, so at that point she was, um, uh, not only borderline, but also hopelessly addicted to, to medication. You know, and, and I'm not saying that medication is, is bad for certain people who are mentally ill. I, don't, I, I think that it can be very good and helpful. Uh, but also, you know, there, there, is, there is now, we're now seeing a result of all this overprescribing in the 90s and people who have committed suicide or just are addicted to drugs because of that. So I, that's, that's a big thing that, that I touch on in the film and the, the scene, you know, illuminates. It, now, certainly it wasn't intended. It was really a personal uh, drama that played out, but 
we are seeing, William, mm. staggering numbers in terms of youth taking their yeah. lives. Obviously, we've seen the opioid, um, mm. uh, you know, insane explosion in this country, et cetera. Not that there was foreshadowing in this, but if there was any thought that this was a symptom of the 90s mm -hmm. in many ways, we've seen this problem on steroids now. Yeah, it has, it has ballooned. You know, I, I think the current statistic is every 15 minutes in America, someone commits suicide. That is staggering. If there's lessons learned, um, not that you can ever go back and change things. Sure. There seems, as you said, you mentioned the inevitability at a certain point, but um, is, there, is there advice that comes out of this? I think so. Uh, the biggest piece of advice, I think, uh, and why I made this movie, is to just put the word suicide in the mainstream. Because I know my sister wouldn't talk to her friends about it, and her friends were pushed away because they didn't understand what was wrong with her, and they felt that she was... She was against them or taking out her emotions on them. But now they know, I wish I, I, wish I knew. Mm. But she was so afraid to talk to them for fear of, well, they're going to think I'm, I, I'm sick and not, not normal. This film, again, it's been recognized a yeah. lot. You can see a lot of top name people attach themselves to a project. Um, and the soundtrack. Yeah. Um, People, I mean, I looked at the back of the songs. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, we're in, the, we're in the same age group. I'm yeah. probably a little older than you, but I connected to some of these songs here. Um, that's gotten a lot of buzz as well. Yeah, it's, it was totally unanticipated, but extremely uh, welcome. It, we, we won a few By awards. By the way, this has to be the fun part of it. We it's get really to pick fun. the soundtrack, right? It is really fun because, well, for a number of reasons, not, not least of which is I, I'm, I'm a musician, and yeah. my band's songs are on it that we recorded 25 years ago. Very cool. And not only, not only that, but because of all the buzz the soundtrack's been getting, we've got a, we just got a record contract for an album. So it took 25 years, and finally we got it. <laughs> now that we're in our 40s and you know, can barely make it through a set. <laughs> well, again, great luck with it. No alternative. Uh, where can people find it now? Well, it's, it's available everywhere digitally. So it's on iTunes, Amazon, uh, Blu-ray and DVD are available on Amazon. Uh, soundtrack is available on vinyl which is kind of amazing, yeah. uh, through Record Store Day. So it's in indie record stores across the country. And uh, the first week of May, the, the novel's being re-released with a foreword by, by Harry Hamlin. Wow. Yeah, so. Well, congratulations. Uh, Thank you, Richard. It's an important message, and it's also a terrific film. We'll be right back.